Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, we'll be looking at the new features and improvements in the latest maintenance release 2020.1. Now, since this is a maintenance release, it's not gonna have a ton of the new features that we would typically see in like an annual release, but there's still quite a bit to talk about, so let's go ahead and dive in. One of the big changes in SketchUp 2020 was the ability to toggle the visibility of hidden geometry separately from hidden objects. But scenes weren't updated to distinguish between the two. So it was basically all or nothing. But in 2020.1, they've split up the two options. So now you can choose to have scenes remember hidden objects separately from top level hidden geometry. Now you'll notice the distinction of top level geometry. So this was actually always the case. In older versions of SketchUp, the hidden geometry toggle would only remember the hidden state of entities that were in the top level context. So if you tried to hide something that was nested in a group or component, um, the scene actually wouldn't remember it. The bottom line is now, if you have some top level loose entities in your model, you can choose whether or not you want their visibility to be saved in your scenes, while also separately being able to choose whether you want hidden objects to be saved in your scene as well. But remember, having loose entities in your model is almost always a bad idea, and I'd much rather see you group loose entities and have the scene remember hidden objects instead. So while I am happy that they split these up, uh, because it didn't really make sense to have them together anymore. But since hidden geometry is only saved at the top level, it's just not very useful. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Maybe there's some good use cases that I'm not thinking of. So definitely leave a comment below and let me know what you think. The next feature is now nested section plane visibility can be saved per scene as well. Now, just to be clear, I'm talking about the actual section plane object, not the section cut itself. As you know, active section cuts could always be saved in a scene, but section plane objects could only be saved if they weren't nested. So basically, this would allow you to show certain section planes in a scene while hiding the others. Now, personally, this isn't something I ever do. I always have my section planes just turned off globally in my scenes. Um, but if you wanted to have just one or two section planes visible in a scene, you can now hide the rest and save it to a scene, and that scene will remember that. All right, the next feature is you can now edit hidden objects. So previously, if you tried to edit a hidden object through the outliner, you wouldn't be able to see the entities in the workspace. But now, if you edit a hidden object, the entities will appear as a mesh while you edit it. Now, I think this is a great improvement to the workflow because you can now make quick edits to a hidden object without having to unhide and then rehide it. Next up, we have some additional grip options for the rotate tool. So these are pretty much the same grips that were added to the move tool in 2020. Um, and you can now toggle through them by tapping the alt key or the command key on Mac, which by the way, they also updated the grip modifier key for the move tool as well to the alt instead of the down arrow. So both the rotate tool and the move tool are gonna behave the same way. All right, now real quick, I wanna tell you about today's video sponsor, Gusto. If you're a business owner like me who runs payroll, I highly recommend checking out Gusto. Gusto is a payroll service that's extremely easy to use and integrates really well with your bookkeeping software. So if you go to mastersketchup.com forward slash Gusto, you'll get a $100 Amazon gift card after running your first payroll. Again, that's mastersketchup.com forward slash Gusto. All right, and the last feature in SketchUp is the ability to create an empty group or component by just right-clicking on empty space. So this is great for a couple of reasons. So first off, whenever you draw something in SketchUp, you always have to make a conscious decision at some point to stop what you're doing, triple-click it, and make it into a group or component. But now, you can just move that action to the beginning of the modeling process by making the object before you start drawing. Or let's say you wanna start drawing a new object on top of a face. If you just started drawing, the entities would actually merge with the face, so you'd be forced to model it off to the side, 
make it into an object, and then move it back in place. But now you can just make an empty group and then just start drawing exactly where you want it. Now, as a side note, you probably should have had the face in a group to begin with before starting to draw the new object, but that's besides the point. But another great thing this feature is for is for creating objects around single entities. Now, although I wish you could just right click an entity and make it a group or component directly, um, it's still pretty easy because basically you can just select the entity, cut it, create an empty group, and then paste in place. So this is like really handy when you're importing images and need to scale it without affecting anything else in your model. All right, now moving on to layout. In addition to some performance improvements, they made a change to the select tool behavior. So now if you click and drag on top of an object, it will know you're trying to drag a selection box. In the past, layout would think you're trying to move the object, which was a major pain. And although they did actually have a modifier key in the past to invoke this behavior, um, so you could just hold down Alt, I think it was, uh, while clicking, and that would prevent objects from moving. But I think this is the right move to make this the default behavior. So now if you want to move an object, you have to click it once to select it, and then you can go ahead and click and drag to move it. All right, so that's it for this maintenance release update. Uh, if you want to read all of the bug fixes, I'll link to the release notes in the description. Um, there's several small improvements, like uh, for instance, you can now select multiple objects in the outliner and toggle their visibility at once. Previously, it, was, uh, it would just toggle the one object. So there's a bunch of small things like this that have been fixed as well. So feel free to check that out. Um, so thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video.